Every fighter's journey to become a champion is different. For some, success is often preordained. For others, the road to glory can push them to their limits and beyond. Uh, from the ashes I take form. Rise like the phoenix shine through the storm. You can never In a division that has been home to some of boxing's greatest fighters, two men, two champions, strive to one day become undisputed. Artur Berbiev has been perfect in the ring. He's unbeaten, destroying every opponent he's faced while capturing two light heavyweight championships. His drive, determination, and power has gotten him to the pinnacle of his sport. For Joe Smith Jr., the journey wasn't as smooth. But boxing's common man has proven he's decidedly uncommon in the ring. After battling the highs and lows of the sport for over a decade, he became a champion in 2021. On June 18th, two of boxing's biggest hitters will be center stage, defending their hard-fought titles. Only one will continue the quest to be the best light heavyweight in the world. This is Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Better be Ev versus Smith Jr. For Joe Smith Jr., it's a typical Sunday afternoon on Long Island. 70 miles from New York City. It's home to the Atlantic Ocean's waves and white sand beaches. It's also the home to the South Shore's latest champion. So I'm from Mastic Beach, <laughs> born and raised. And it's, uh, it's nice, you know, uh, close to the beach. So, I mean, I enjoy it. Anytime um, I'm not in the gym training, I'm here at home doing some yard work or you know, things around the house, just trying to keep everything looking as nice as possible. <laughs> Plan on having a 4th of July party or something, you know, to get the family together and just have a good time together and celebrating with uh, three of my belts. Joe Smith Jr. is just as blue collar outside the ring as he is in it. He owns a tree trimming business and is a former laborer for his local union. Even his boxing nickname reflects his persona, the common man. I mean, I kind of like the name, the common man. You know, I got it from being an everyday working type guy. And um, more people started using it after the Hopkins fight. We ain't gonna preach, but we just gonna talk about common. Special. Common. Common man. Special man. Which one you want? In 2016, as the common man, Joe Smith Jr. made an emphatic entrance to boxing's center stage when he took on future Hall of Famer Bernard Hopkins. It would be the final fight of Hopkins' storied career. He's seen something in me that he thought he could capitalize on and, you know, beat me. But uh, I took his plans away from him. Comment man, special. Man, which one you want? Joe Smith Jr. That insult became him. And it became the reason, I think, why a lot of people will embrace Joe even more when they see him on June 18th. 
because that common man is very uncommon in that ring. Montreal, Canada, over 5,000 miles away from where Chechen-born Arthur Betterbiev grew up. There, Betterbiev was an outstanding amateur world champion and a two-time Olympian. When he looked to turn pro more than a decade ago, he made the journey here, becoming a Canadian citizen Perfect. Perfect. and finding a new home. First time I met Mark, it's 2012, when I visit Montreal first time. But the first time really I see him live was in the World Championship in Chicago in 2007. He was already very clear he can do a good professional. He was winning a matter of bout with a professional style, and this is a very rare. Archer already have that style. Mark knows professional things. He has experience, he a lot of championship fights. It's new for me, and I, I want to learn this, everything. Nobody's perfect, but for a trainer to train a guy like that, it's a almost perfect situation. Like, every single decision that he makes in his life, it's for boxing. The difference is not the talent, the difference is the, the discipline and the, the work ethic that he has. Perfect, perfect. Very good. He's looking to be better every training, for every fight. He don't care who he's fighting. He tried to be himself a better boxer always. Snap, snap, snap. Snap, snap, snap. OK. A little bit lower. Take it. Take it down. Bang. Hey. He always says, I want to be a good boxer one day. So whenever we show him something, he'll be like, if I keep learning, I'm going to be a good boxer one day. There you go. The lower you get, the stronger you'll be. Today, Betterbiev is much more than just a good boxer. He's an undefeated light heavyweight champion, universally recognized as one of the hardest punchers in boxing. This is everything every boxing fan has ever asked for. What they want is this guy. Like He's coming to destroy. He's, like, he's Tyson. Everything he's throwing has bad intentions all over it. You don't want to be on cruise control. You don't want to be in, in that zone where I'm world champion and now you can whew, you can relax about it. He doesn't need you to tell him. You gotta work hard, but you gotta get in shape. He doesn't need anyone to tell him. He's a driven animal. He's very focused on Joe Smith. Of course, we want all the belt. This is what we target. This is nothing personal. We just want all the belts, very clear. Titles motivate me, I think so. I always like titles. A typical boxing gym is full of noise and full of fighters. The scene at the heavy hitters gym is anything but typical. Joe Smith trains here for his June 18th fight alone. Joined only by longtime trainer Jerry Capobianco. That's good. Good job. You know, it's a little awkward. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it's just me and him, you know, and it's, um, you know, I mean, we just sort of got used to it, I guess. It, it was even before the pandemic, but the pandemic sort of cemented it this way a little bit, you know. But um, it works. It works for me because, uh, I mean, He's, he's focused 100% on me. He's not focused on other fighters and what they're doing. He's just focused on me and what I need to do to win against the opponent that I'm facing. So we just come in here together and there's no distractions because it's just me and him in the gym and the bags. <laughs> Smith is in the spotlight as he prepares to unify the light heavyweight titles in one of boxing's most anticipated fights. But his road to the championship was anything but easy. After the Bernard Hopkins fight, um, we went from zero to a thousand miles an hour 
and Joe's world got real big very fast. You know, I just knocked out Bernard Hopkins, you know, and, and he wasn't cocky or bragging about it, but, you know, he had to settle in because next was Barrera. In 2017, Smith faced off with Sullivan Barrera. After dropping Barrera early, Smith suffered a broken jaw in losing a decision. Nearly two years later, he got his first title shot against current WBA light heavyweight champion, Dimitri Bivol. Smith lost a decision. I learned a lot in that fight by facing a world champion, and I learned things that I needed to do differently and work on. So right after the fight, we got back in the gym, and we turned things around from that point. After decisioning Jesse Hart and knocking out former champion Elader Alvarez in nine rounds, Smith faced off with Maxim Vlazov a year ago for the vacant WBO Light Heavyweight Championship. To, uh, everything was on the line for the Vlasov fight because, you know, you get a second shot, world title. Frantic, busy pace from Vlasov. There was a point in the fight where I went back to the corner and I said to Jerry, I was like, man, I, I don't know if I'm gonna make it through this one. It's, you know, he, he's really, you know, getting to me. Joe, man, you, you gotta step this up. We're never coming here again. Like, this is it. You gotta get this belt. We're not leaving here without that belt. You know, after that moment, all the stuff I went through, the broken jaw, losing to Bivol, you know, it just, all that stuff was running through my head, and I was like, I'm not doing that again. I'm gonna pull through this and win this fight and become world champion. And new WBO light heavyweight champion of the world, the beast from the east, Joe Smith Jr. <laughs> Early in the morning, three days a week, Artur Berbiev arrives for his strength and conditioning at a facility reserved for Canada's elite amateur and professional athletes. We train early morning because this is first thing the most important to do. What puts him apart from others, first physical uh, potential He's exceptionally well built for boxing with uh, natural uh, genetical factors, which is hard to find them out. Boxers with very fast twitch fiber, which uh, can generate a lot of power. Also cardiovascular capacity. So his lungs, his heart is, is really very, very uh, well adapted to training. This is just injury preventive exercise for shoulders. When you punch, you rotate your shoulder after it gets injured. So we train always rotate stabilizers of the shoulders. There is an impact to prevent injuries. His discipline, his punctuality, his devotion, his determination is absolutely exceptional. He's completely devoted to his task to boxing. So this is his life. He used to say such a joke, if I'm not there at seven o'clock because I'm dead. Andre is a uh, good coach. I like him like because he's interesting. We worked together almost 10 years. Why are you so badly with me? On training, at training, huh? I want you to perform. But it's not excuse, it's not, it's not good. Like, do I do something? All, you always want to kill myself, I don't know. <laughs> Why? I want to get strong, stronger. No, it's not like this. To protect you. I don't believe you. To protect you. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> My mom always when to see what we do in training, like, you know, when I post it in Instagram or something. She talk with me, like, why you do this? Why you kill yourself? It's Andre, no good for you. <laughs> okay, let's go. Last one. 
we have developed uh, relations and he learned a lot of techniques. And we follow such a pattern which gives us quite a bit of success throughout his career. Jerry Capobianco has been the man leading Joe Smith into the ring for the last 13 years. In his Long Island home, he has a room dedicated to Smith and to his own fighting family, whose history in the sport goes back decades. It started with my father, right? Okay. And 1949, he won the Golden Gloves. And 33 years to the day, I won them. So that was sort of, that was something back then, you know? That, that's my father. And that's me. I signed for a little bit of money, just like a little salary or something like that. And, you know, like after you win the gloves in New York, that's a big deal. So, you know, I had a little sponsor. You know, I thought everything was going to be good. But I had a heart attack when I was 21. You know, so that was the end of it. Like my father was like, listen, that's it. You're done. So I hated it. Like I didn't want to look at it. And then it was like I just forgot about it. Raised my kids, had a nice family. And then, you know, one day I go in the gym and I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. This kid could do it. <laughs> that kid in the gym turned out to be Joe Smith Jr., the first and only fighter Capo Bianco has ever trained. You know, to me, I don't think there's any trainer just picked one kid that wasn't a blue chip fighter, or, but from basically scratch. I met Jerry when I was about 18. I was getting, I think I was preparing to fight in the Golden Gloves. So um, he helped me out training for that. And then um, he told me, you know, Joe, listen, just give me, give me a few years and um, I'll make you a world champion. So, you know, I looked at him and laughed and I said, yeah, right. Um, you know, I didn't believe it could happen, but uh, I stuck with him, I listened to him and uh, he got me here. In January of this year, Smith Jr. defended his hard-earned light heavyweight title for the first time against Stephen Jeffrard. You know, defending my title for the first time was like one of my biggest fights to me because it's like I got to really defend it to prove that I am a world champion and look good doing it. Well, I just try to keep the pressure on him. And there's a straight right that does some damage. And here comes Joe Smith Jr. And um, I figured him out and uh, eventually got him out of there. Joe Smith wants to make sure that he goes no further. This is about over right now. The corner has decided that the fight is over. So I did it and I'm happy for it. <laughs> You know, he, he got through it and, you know, he, he got it under his belt. And now we're moving on to unify. Each and every time I get in the ring, I'm going to get better and better. And um, I believe the next time you see me, I'll be ready for anybody. For Artur Betterbiev, his faith outside the ring is as important as his punching power in it. A devout Muslim, his beliefs are at the forefront of everything he does. I don't think about like uh, being Muslim is helping for me for sport or not, you know. We think about like to do good things, to be happy God, you know. I don't want to mix sport and religion, you know. I don't like that, you know, because sport is one day is finished, you know. Religion we have for all life. In your heart, you feel good. Last December, 
Berbiev's faith in himself was tested in the ring. During his title defense against Marcus Brown, an accidental clash of heads threatened to stop the fight. Berbiev's reign as champion was in jeopardy. Oh, that is a nasty gash right in the middle of the forehead of Berbiev, and he is leaking all over the place. We got unintentional clash of heads. We want to start that fight slow and put gradual pressure on Marcus Brown. With the cut, we have a danger that they stop the fight. That was a serious cut. It was not like uh, like this. That was like that. Blood going right to his eyes. That cut is pouring blood from the forehead of Better BM. They took us to doctor. The doctor said like one more round. One more round. When he came back, he sat down and I told him, you do your job and you focus. There's the possibility that Better Biev is only being given one more round. He did what he did, it's not legal. I think it's not good to do that. He make me angry. Whatever happened in a boxing fight, it's 12 rounds, there is no panic there, especially for a fighter like him who's a very complete fighter. He can box, he can punch, he can put pressure on you, he can counter punch. I can ask him anything just like this and he's gonna bring to the table something different. It's, for me, it's very important to do what we prepared in gym, to do this in ring. It's not changing your plan. You have to follow your plan. He didn't fight like the cut was bothering him. He didn't try to protect the cut. You know, he just seek and destroy. He knows where we are, what happened, and how he has to conduce himself to end that fight. And it's very clear when you look at the fight, you can see that that changed. He became like a little bit like an animal and just broke down uh, Marcus Brown. Next time on Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Better Be Ev versus Smith Jr. I believe right now I'm the best light heavyweight in the world. No matter what happens, you know, he's a world champion. That, that was the goal. Everything that Joe is, Arthur is all that in there. Short, short. He's a good boxer, he, he has good experience, and it's a good challenge for me. I believe I'm the hardest hitting guy that he's faced so far. And I hope when I land that good shot and hurt him that it's enough. <laughs>